It's time for Where You Live with Gene and Tony, the show that's all about owning, buying, selling, renting, and association management. If it involves a home, we'll talk about it. Here's your chance to get your homeowner questions answered. From the Concierge Landscape Studios, here's Gene and Tony. Need the shelter of someone's arms, and there you were. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Uh, we're glad that uh, you're with us here on a nice Sunday morning. Uh, we've got a number of articles we're going to talk about here in the second hour. Um, one, there is a man in Georgia who has some real tough questions he wants answered by his HOA because the HOA made a what he said was a unanimous decision in not permitting something to take place at his home. But he said, wait a minute, I'm on the board. I don't recall voting for this. What, what, what's <laughs> when unanimous? was that meeting? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, whoops. Uh, another one, uh, this one uh, caught my attention. It said that there was a condominium manager, a management company, uh, that uh, may have some issues because they dragged their feet in getting a roof leak repaired, and uh, now th- someone's suing, and uh, they won't be able to claim a statute of limitations uh, has run out. Doesn't sound good mm. for the home team, but mm-hmm. we'll talk about <laughs> the details of that. And then a bitter battle. Say that t- 10 times quack. Bitter battle. Yes. That's tough. A bitter battle uh, in a homeowner association about a backyard play set. And uh, we'll talk uh, we'll talk about that as well. If you're just joining us in the last segment, we're talking a little bit uh, about the uh, city of St. Paul calling for some more tax hikes, and mm. uh, we ran out of time. But Tony, you had a few things. Well, you wanted property to say. taxes. Yeah. You know, that's a hot topic okay. for any property owner, and certainly in our industry, it's a hot topic. Um, and you know what I always have to bring up when we talk about increases in property taxes. Why, oh, why do we still pay out rebates of property taxes to single-family homeowners and to renters? If we don't have enough income to pay our bills, why are we giving money away? Now, let me give you the phone number to leave a message because this prompted comments (laughs) the first time I said this on the air. You can leave your comment at 952-224-2668. The problem is renters have come to look at this as as. A, a rent subsidy to them every year. They expect to get this few hundred dollars or several hundred dollars. They rely on it. It's become a rent subsidy instead of property tax rebate. Renters, you know what? You If the property taxes go up, your rent is going to go up because that's an expense to the owner. The landlord is in business. He's not doing this as a charity. He's not doing this because he specifically wants to make sure you have a roof over your head. You are his customer and he wants to serve you well, but he's got to make enough income to pay his expenses, right? (laughs) So why don't you give up that property tax rebate and try and keep rents lower? I mean, there's so much about property taxes that I don't like. The the fact that you've (laughs) got a a, a stepped up uh, a uh, percentage of what is owed depending on the value of the house. Okay. Because uh, it's determined that, well, if the house is worth more, you should be able to... Uh, you have more. You have more. <laughs> so pay more. Uh, you know, I have an issue. Uh, there is even a stepped up uh, a value that is uh, are taxed on commercial buildings yep. a lot more than there is just on... Uh, a residential home. A residential yeah. Keep home. in mind, your landlord's paying a higher, much higher rate of property tax. And then the landlord, too, uh, yeah. you know, with it being non-homesteaded. Uh, yeah. I, I tell you, it uh, they get you uh, get you every which yeah. way. And yeah. if it were if it were just a, a little bit more reasonable and by reasonable, equitable. I just mean equi- I mean equitable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That would be uh, that would be. Yeah, the right. I get very tired of every time you turn around. They want to lay some cost on businesses because it's a business. You can afford it. It's a business. You can write it off. Um, everything costs you more when you're running your business. Your phone service costs you more. Your property taxes cost you more. Your utilities, I think, cost you more. Everything is 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 uh, an banking. upcharge. Banking, banking costs, banking costs banking you more. Banking is free for uh, yes. someone. I mean, I, I <laughs> for many, most individuals. Yeah. I remember a lot of. Uh, 
board members in an HOA not understanding that because now they're dealing with an HOA that is a they're corporation. They're operating a business, yeah. It's a business. And they say, why are we paying banking fees? Banking is free for me. Well, it is for you only because banks are bearing that cost on the backs of businesses yes. who will charge um, 25 cents per check that is going to be uh, listed yeah. uh, in a deposit. Yeah. And, of course, the more banking you do, you can get that fee down. But sure, you're still you paying a per, check, uh, a per check fee. You're paying for uh, a statement to be given to you as opposed to getting one uh, free for re- for a individual customer. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot that is born on business. Yep. And I think that um, businesses have come to – understand and deal with that but it would be if things were a lot more equitable in the long run i think it would be cheaper even for the end user the, the consumer. consumer as well yeah yeah um we'd love to hear what you think about uh property uh, ta- uh property taxes do you like the way uh they go do you agree with tony uh again if you want to leave us a, a comment on our hotline 952 952- Two two four two six six eight. We'll uh, play those uh, comments on next week's show. Uh, let's talk about this uh, next uh, article, and this is a gentleman uh, in Georgia, Duluth, Georgia. When I hear Duluth, I usually I just thought, think of I, Minnesota. Yeah, I thought we were talking about up north, but no, we're talking down south. This guy, and this comes from the CBS Atlanta affiliate, it says Duluth man has tough questions for his HOA. Over solar panels. Uh, A man in Duluth, Georgia, has tough questions for his HOA. He says he's trying to just do the right thing by putting solar panels on his home to save energy, but his homeowner association is blocking him from doing that. Uh, It says uh, their estimate was for 27 panels, so it would uh, make three rows of nine panels, said Mark Rhodes, the owner who wanted to have these panels uh, on his um, on his home. He actually did go ahead and put them on his home. Okay. Uh, without uh, the board approval. He thought uh, okay. this was such a great idea that, uh, you know, following up uh, to let them know that he had done it, that would be okay. Rhodes planned um, to cover, it says he has uh, the south-facing portion of his home, uh, with uh, solar panels, HOA saying, no way, you can't do this. Mm. Um, Road says our country is saying we need renewable energy. And uh, he said it just seems right to be able to do something like this. But in a letter of rejection by the Architectural Control Committee from the HOA, they said the panels would create glare. There could be other visual problems. And there are probably other things that were listed, too. Um, we've seen people list, uh, HOAs list uh, issues with uh, if something happens uh, because of a storm now and it gets uh, there's damage to the roof, who's responsible for that? Mm. Um, there are a lot of issues that need to be uh, talked about. So anyway, the president of the association wrote a letter, an email to him saying it was a unanimous decision. And that's where Rhodes got upset and said, oh, wait a minute. He said, uh, I'm on the board. How can this be a unanimous decision? <laughs> what does that mean? Unanimous. Yeah. And when so I, and he said he even says he wasn't invited to the meeting. He didn't even know that there was a meeting. And uh, and and from this point on, he's trying to reach out to others on the board, and he says, "I'm just not getting anybody to yeah. Uh, comment." Yeah, uh, Tony, what do you think about this? Well, it put his dander up. He says that in the in the story because the board said, "Hey, we made this unanimous decision," and he knows it wasn't a unanimous decision because he wasn't involved in the discussion. It it put his dander up, and he now he really wants to hang on and and continue to fight this issue. But what's interesting to me. As we often say, these news stories or TV news stories do not paint the whole picture. They don't give you all the details. This printed story. Where's is not, Paul Harvey when you need him? You yeah. need the Did rest of the story. Straight? Yeah, you, you need, need the, the rest, rest of, of the, the story. story. That's right. This story that we're reading did not say he had already gone ahead and put these panels on his roof before getting approval from the association but you said the videotape you watched or the video you watched of it clearly it showed clear that, that he's already got him already up there. so let's say the the first mistake was why did he go ahead and make this architectural con- yeah. change 
without approval from his board or from his association. Well, you're right. There are two big mistakes. He made a mistake as a homeowner. Uh, The association made a big mistake as well. Uh, We would make a big mistake if we don't go to break right Uh now. So let's do that right now. When we come back, we'll talk about the mistake that the homeowner made, the mistake that the board made in this issue that could, Tony and I think, be clearly solved if there was a little more reasonableness. (laughs) We'll tell you about that after these messages.